Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. So in this lesson, we're going to start a brand new topic. The topic is called curve fitting. Now, in science and engineering, you know, science and engineering is all about observing uh, processes, right? So we're always gathering data points. And the next step in gathering data points is we want to create a model to describe those data points or a model, in other words, an equation to describe those data points. Now, this part is going to be made up of two main topics. We're going to go through something called regression analysis and also interpolation. Right? Now, in this lesson, we're going to start with the simplest type of regression analysis, which is called linear regression. If I have a set of data points that have a linear trend to them, right? How can I best fit a line uh, to those data points? So this is going to be the main topic of um, this lesson. We're also going to learn what is meant by a best fit line. What is the definition of a best fit line? Also, we're going to learn how to develop a linear regression program and also compare the results to Excel's inbuilt linear regression um, function. Now, when we're fitting a line to a set of data points, what are the two characteristics that define a line? Well, the line, if it's a straight line, we need an intercept and a slope. Those are the two things that would describe a line. So if I'm going to best fit a straight line to a set of uh, data points, I need to find what is the intercept and what is the slope that would give me the best line that would best fit these data points. OK, now I have I have chosen those 20 data points. And usually the first thing that you would do is you would graph the data points. And as you see here, the data points definitely have a linear trend and we will be uh, pursuing to uh, create a straight line for these data points. Now, the definition of a best fit line goes like this. We're trying to minimize this sum of the square of the residuals. And what do I mean by that? Well, a residual is basically the distance between the measured value, basically these data points, and what the model we're going to create will predict. So if I can create a line that would, min would minimize the distance between these points and the line, that would be the definition of the best fit line. Now, the model, because we create, we said uh, it's going to be a straight line, the model will be described as this. It's going to be A0 being the intercept plus A1xi, and A1 will be our slope. So this is the equation of a straight line. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to find what is the um, A0, what is the intercept and slope that would minimize the sum of the square of the residuals. OK, so you can see we're talking about minimum and maximums and all that. So this is definitely an optimization problem. We're trying to minimize an error here. Right. So you can see that the residual is dependent on two things. Right. It's depending on the intercept and the slope, which means when we're going to be getting the derivatives or the critical points. Right. We're going to have to take a partial derivative in terms of a naught and a partial derivative in terms of a one. Now, if I take a partial derivative in terms of a naught, now taking a uh, derivative of this, that's going to be a chain rule. So it's going to be uh, uh, the outside one. It's going to be two times this sum. So this is the derivative using power rule of the outside function, and the inside, since the uh, variable here is a naught, is just going to be negative one. So this is where the negative comes in. Now, if we take the partial derivative in terms of a one. Uh, you're going to find we have the outside is still the same, 2 times the sum, but it's go going to be multiplied by negative and um, xi, right? So now we have our two derivatives. So the second thing that we do is we place a make to equal to 0, right? Those are going to be a representative of our uh, optimums. Now, when I... Uh, place them into equal to zero, I can now distribute the sum inside and I have this form now for this one and I have this form now for this one. Now by applying a few of the sigma rules, in other words, the sigma a naught is going to be n a naught and also if you have a constant inside here which is a1 you can actually bring it outside and also we have a naught and a1 here where they're constants and we're going to bring them outside too and also we rearrange those two equations to have these two equations down here okay so 
we're doing algebraic manipulations, we end up with these two equations here, or mainly A1. Now let's look at what A1 is defined in terms of. So A1 is our slope, it's defined in terms of n, n is the number of data points that we have. In, in this example we have 20 data points. And we have also this sum of xi, yi. Now xi, yi sum means that I'm going to multiply each one of these two numbers and I'm going to add them all up right? And this is the sum of xi, which means this is the sum of all the x's here, sum of y, sum of all the y's. And this is the sum of xi squared. That means I'm going to square each one of these, and then I'm going to add them all up. And this is just, just the square of the x sum that you have up here. So you can actually see that the slope is defined entirely in terms of these data points, right? It's entirely in, is defined in terms of how many data points I have. And for uh, different sums of these data points, right? I, so one of the things that I want you to realize is for you to fit a uh, regre regression curve, all you need to know is are the data points that you have. Now a naught, given that I have the slope, now a naught is the average y minus a1 and the average x, right? And the average y is merely the sum of all the y's divided by n, and the average x is the sum of all the x's divided by n. So if I have a1, I can uh, get a0 by getting, getting the um, average y and the average x value. Now, all of this is theory in terms of how these two equations came uh, came about. But all you need to know is really this: these two equations, A1 and A0. Because if you're fitting, if you have a set of data points and you, and you graph them and they have a linear line, you go ahead and create the A1 and the A0 using those two equations. And those are the A1 and A0 that will give you the best fit because those two equations are derived by having in mind to minimize the sum of the square of the residuals. Okay, so there is something else that, we, that I need to define, which is an R squared of a model. Now, an R squared of, the, of a model describes how effective the model is, right? So um, the minimum value of r is 0, the maximum value is is 1. So let's assume I have an r squared of, say, 0.80. What that means is, that means my model describes 80% of the behavior of these points. So it's a pretty good model. Now, uh, what about if my model has an r squared of 0.99? That means my model describes 99% of the behavior of all of these points, which means we we created a pretty impressive, pretty great model if it has an R squared of 0.99. So an R squared is a great way to measure the effectiveness of your model. Now let's go ahead and go uh, through the code. Now looking at the fact that we're going to be only dealing with those two equations, you can see that the uh, code is going to be very, very simple. Right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create two vectors. Right. I'm going to create a vector x and a vector y uh, that can house 20 points. Right. For for the x's and the y's. And we said this is these are all the information that we need to create the best fit. Right. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to input x and y using this loop here, and I'm going I related these cells uh, to uh, these cells I have here. Okay. So this code inputs x and y. Given that I have x and y, now I can actually go ahead and get a1 and a0. Well, to get a1, I need to define those uh, four sums, the sum of the x, sum y, sum xi, and sum xi squared. Okay, so this is a very, very simple sum code. Um, I uh, Just for efficiency, all of them is are in um, one loop. So, for instance, for the sum of all the x's, it's going to be sum x is equal to sum x plus xi. So, as it loops 20 times, it's going to add all these 20 numbers. Uh, it's going to do the same thing for the y. In terms of this one, this is the sum xi, uh, xy. So, it's going to multiply each of the x and y, and it's going to keep adding all of them. This is just the xi uh, squared. So after you're done with this code, now you have all, all four sums that you need. So you, ha you need all four sums and also n, which you already know, which, is, which are uh, the number of data points. Uh, so now we have all the information for A1. So this is just the um, 
the equation that we have over here, okay? Uh, defined in terms of n, and here are the uh, four sums that we defined here. So now that we have a1, right? Uh, given that we have a1, now we can go ahead and get a0, right? But a0, we need to get what is the average y and average x first. Now the average y is basically the sum of all the y's divided by the number of data points, and the average x is the sum of all the x's divided by the number of data points. Given I have that, I would create what a0 is, right? So now at this point, at this particular point, I have the model that would best fit these data points. But I'm going to go a step further, and I'm going to go ahead and get the r squared, and this is going to tell me the effectiveness of that model. Now, this is defined in terms of uh, SR, which as defined here is the sum of the square of the residuals. Now, ST is also a sum, an error sum. Instead of related to the model, it's related to the average of uh, these data points. Okay, so let's see how this works. Now, let's look at the uh, residual since we're familiar with it. So here, SR is equal to SR, and we see it's a sum, right? So sum of uh, the difference here is SR is equal to SR plus uh, YI, which is the measured value of one point, minus, then this is the uh, predicted value of the model, right? I'm using A0 that I calculated up here. A1 that I calculated up here, and the xi that is related to this yi, and I squared it. And this will loop 20 times, and it's going to give me the sum of the residuals. Now, you can see with the st, the only difference between the residual and the st is now it's related to the, uh, the average of these data points, right? Uh, so... Uh, also, of course, you have to um, remember to initialize the SR and ST and also initialize the four sums as we were creating the sum over here. And that's it. We then, since we have the ST and SR, we go ahead and calculate the R squared. And it's basically ST minus SR divided by SR. And this is just a code that displays the A0, A1, and R squared, because those are the three things that we're after. A0 and A1 describe the best fit line for these data points, and R squared tells us the effectiveness of that model. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and run the code and see what is going to output here. All right, great. So it tells us that our intercept is going to be um, 3.365, uh, and you can see maybe uh, that is going to extrapolate to this point. And our um, here, our slope is going to be 2.229. And you can see the R squared is 0 0.995. That means the model that has this intercept and this slope is going to describe 99.5% of the behavior of the points that you see in front of you here. Now, let's go ahead and, and use Excel's inbuilt function to actually do linear regression. And basically, it's very simple. You go out here and you uh, right click and you say add a trend line. And adding a trend line is basically doing uh, linear or uh, doing regression analysis and fitting a model to these data points. So I'm going to say uh, fit the trend line options. I'm going to say linear. And I'm also going to say display the equation on the chart. And the equation is going to show us the intercept and the slope. And I'm also going to say this play the R squared. So those are the things that I want to um, compare with my own results. Okay, so let me actually um, increase the font on that. So you can see here, we have the in the intercept here as 3.5647, 3.5647, uh, exactly. And this one is 2.229 and of course 2, and 2.2292, and you have to see the R squared is 99.995, so exactly the same um, uh, values. And that's not a surprise, because that is basically the model that Excel uses to find the trend of the model that would best fit um, data points, right? So let's briefly recap what we learned in this lesson. What we learned in this lesson is, if we have a set of data points that have that show a linear trend, how can we best fit um, a model to these points. And by definition, the best fit is basically reducing the, the sum of the square of the residuals, right? We went through the theory of it, and we got the partial derivatives, and until we came up with these two equations of A1 and A0. Uh, 
um, and you found out that A1 and A0 are defined entirely in terms of uh, the data points, the number of data points uh, in terms of uh, A1 and also four different sums here, and A0 is defined in terms of the slope and uh, the two averages for X and Y. Uh, and also you, we went through the uh, linear regression program and it's a very very simple program uh, for linear regression actually in a later lesson we're going to uh, create a generalized uh, poly uh, polynomial regression code for any order polynomial first order second third whichever um, but this one is very very specific to linear regression Okay, uh, we also uh, lastly uh, compared um, our data points, our um, output from the code with Excel's inbuilt linear regression function or trend finding function, and we find we got the exact values. And again, that's not a surprise because that is the model that Excel uses. Okay, uh, well, that marks the end of this lesson, and I will see you in the next lesson.